Alright, right, YouTube, you cried, you cut yourselves, and you went on murder sprees, and I finally listened. And I'm giving to you a video on my feeder animals. Um, I guess one of the main animals that feeding is necessary feeding videos are necessary or for are my is my snake and uh, for my snake I feed it a wide variety from mice to human infants no I'm just kidding <laughs> human infants tend to be a very good meal for snakes um, it's it's best to feed them live human infants uh, fetuses are also a very nice treat <laughs> That, that joke's gonna get me so much fucking hate on YouTube. Anyway, now, on to the real video. Um, I actually have a very wide variety of feeder animals. Starting out with, um, my super warm beetles. And, uh, I really hope that this... Whoopsies. I really hope that this guy is pregnant, or this girl, because... And hoping that's a girl. Because my male... Uh, the, her, the mate just died. Uh, it's probably because of the coldness. Uh, Spile15 said that his uh, super warm beetles died off because it was getting so cold. But, uh, yeah, that's probably a very reasonable source. But super worms are um, the way they breed are just like mealworms they go from the uh, the larval stage which is the common food and then they move up to pupa and the pupa compared to a mealworm pupa if I had some mealworm pupa I would show you but there was an, there's an incredible difference in the superworm larva is very much larger but um yeah superworms are a very good treat um I mainly feed them to my bearded dragon. Uh, they are a really nice treat for my bearded dragon. He'll eat uh, like eight to nine a day whenever I have them. And like I said, they're a treat. I normally feed him crickets and dubias, but um, the superworms are a nice treat. Um, about breeding the superworms, you need um, superworms need to be completely solitary. And they need to be in complete darkness to pupate. So if you go to like Wendy's and get the little ketchup holders that have the little caps on them. And maybe poke little holes in the caps. Uh, and then just slap a mealworm in there and put the cap on there. And you don't need to have like any moisture or any oatmeal in there. And then eventually it'll pupate and you throw it into a, a little oatmeal place and wait for it to become a beetle. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the super warm part. Um, I, I have yet to find super warm larva babies, but, um, moving on to the next one are my dubias, and I need, I need to get more, because I only got 40, uh, at the reptile show, and, uh, we've been feeding a lot of them to my hedgehog, um, which you'll see in another video, but, um, yeah, we really don't have that many left, and uh, my my reptiles love these things. They're they're easy to breed. Um, they they haven't been going good for me because I've gone through them so fast. I started out with forty, and I think they bred a lot, and I got to like fifty or something, and now I have very few because they've been going to all my reptiles. But dubia beetles are a great source of calcium, and they are just really good, and if anyone out there owns a hedgehog, these are these are a perfect meal for them. Um, yeah, these pretty much. I'll feed these tiny ones. You see them in here. I'll feed ones about this size to my Savannah monitor, and ones like that big, and uh, the females, maybe not that big, but a little smaller. I'll feed them to my baby hedgehog. Um, these also go to my bearded dragon. And occasionally, I'll feed small ones, like about that size, to my leopard gecko. But they're a little bit harder for him to get down. Um, uh, I like the dubia beetles because they don't fly, they don't climb, they don't jump, they don't bite. 
Um, they're really easy. That's the best way to say it. They're just really easy. And uh, there's a reptile show on January 10th and 11th where I'm going to buy a colony of 100 of them so that they'll last and hopefully that'll be enough to get them to start breeding and get me a lot. But um, that's the roach part. Um, guess we'll move on to our next feeder animals. Uh, here are the Madagascar Hisser cockroaches. And like y'all saw recently in the Petland videos, I just got these today. And I've read online, I'm not very experienced with them, but I have read online that they are a great source of food, great source of calcium. Um, they're, they're kind of difficult for your animal to catch. Um, but... I looked at them and I got a male and a female, and I'm not exactly sure how to do it, but I got them the little cricket water and cricket food, and the female seems to be digging into it, but um, I got I have them in EcoEarth currently, and I, I'm hoping to see some sort of a result. I could have sworn the male was getting it on with a female earlier, but um, I, I really don't know. But I, I do know that the babies, like the pretty small ones, like this big, are a pretty good meal for reptiles. Um, so yes, um, hopefully I'll have some videos up of these guys' reproductions. And uh, Geico just freaked the hell out and ran around his cage. But um, yeah, so moving on are the um, mice and the only reason that I breed mice, uh, you know, I haven't, I haven't even been successful with breeding mice, but the only reason I really have mice is for Sylvia, and I cannot wait until she gets big enough to eat, eat rats. Uh, I'm really excited for that because mice are a pain in the ass. Um, guys, if y'all have a snake that's like three feet long, at least three feet long, do not breed mice because they're a waste of your time. Breed rats because mice take longer to breed, uh, which mean and since they take longer to breed, you've got to buy more food, and uh, you'll eventually have to get more cages. Uh, well, no, you'll need to get more cages for the rats, but it, it just takes so much more work with mice. And uh, here's the mice. Let me flip on a light really quickly. If you'll give me a moment. Oh, that's right. I have that shitty night light from when I had my frog. But um, I, I, the closest that I've gotten with breeding mice was, um, I had a pregnant mouse, and then my cat ate him. So, uh, um, yeah, that that might have been my mistake for leaving the cage. I have a problem with cage tops. Left the cage top for the mice off and the cat got him. Left the cage top off for the centipede and he got out onto my bed. God knows what Spyro's fixing to do. But, um, yeah. Mice, problem. Rats, not a problem. Um, yeah, rats just, they breed faster. They're easier to take care of. They die faster. And by die, I mean you get more to feed to the damn snake. And, um, yeah. So, that's pretty much my feeder animals. Hope y'all enjoyed this video. If you liked it, subscribe to me. Uh, comment and rate. And, we are currently... We are currently out of crickets. And my sister's going up to the store to get some. But, we are going to buy a hundred. And, these are not, these are not for feeding. These are an att attempt to breed... So, we're gonna, I've, I've been looking at, go to Matt Spot 2, I'm pretty sure that's his name. I'll have the link to all the people that I've mentioned in this video, like Spile and uh, Matt Spot, but Matt Spot 2 has great uh, cricket breeding tips, and he's got like four, three or four videos, I think, just about breeding crickets. So, go and visit him, and that's about it. Um, I'll have the links in the description over there, over there, I'm, I don't know which way it is, but I am going to go handle my centipede, which is extremely stupid. No, I'm just kidding.